costume helmet audio amplifier installs. Lessons learned. So my intent is always to get it hidden, integrated OEM look like it was supposed to be there, as if you would believe the Vader mask or the Mandalorian mask would be by default, not something hanging on your belt. So hide it inside, make it blend in. That is always my intent. So here are some of my lessons learned. You can see both of these videos on how, how the amp installs are done, but I'm just going to kind of gloss over the lessons learned. Okay, first of all, you're going to buy a voice amp of some kind. I've got a recommended one. I'll get to it in a second. Your amp install, don't accept the first voice amp that you come across. In this particular install, I took the first one that I bought, and it was actually had a, a board in it like this, an electronics board, and it had a circle in the middle where its speaker was. So I swapped it out, and I managed to squeeze it in here, and boy, it was, it was tough. Um, so there are much... Um, better boards out there. You can get them in a much smaller form factor. Um, I've got one now that I'll recommend that's basically down to something like this. Big difference, big difference. Um, and then of course your input options. Um, micro SD is what I prefer to use in these. I don't like to have to use a, a phone or you know some other device to push Bluetooth to something, but if Bluetooth's your thing, of course, you know, um, do that for voice changing or whatever you're using it for. But I like to stick with micro SDs and that's mainly for the um, additional things. Like in, in this, I've got the breathing that I've got on there. I've got the Imperial March, I've got other stuff, but you know, whatever, you get the point. Um, one of the challenges when you look at inputs are access. How do you access those specific things? Um, let, me, let me just show you, you can see a difference here. Um, here's the board. In this one, this is my modern take, very small board. I've got the buttons all completely visible, um, and I just hand-labeled them after I pulled it out of its box. On this, this is how I integrated this one, and then popped the mic out here. Um, so the button accessibility is they were on the inside, um, and if you've got them cut to the right level, I ended up kind of trimming them off because they were a little too sensitive because they were pushing up against the front of the mask, but I could change them by pushing on the front of the mask, which has its benefits. It's not the most intuitive, but it works. Um, but on this specific design, it actually had another toggle down on the side, which I had to remote buttons over here for, you know, all of it ended up coming in very good in the end, but it was a lot of extra work, right? And then um, this kind of gets to something else. So now we also... Oh, on that board, you want to think about your wattage. I'm sure you get a good wattage, like 10 plus watts coming out of your whatever whatever board you choose or whatever voice amp you choose, get 10 plus watts. When I'm talking personal amps, I'm talking about these things. This one, this one is a gold mine. This one's, it's very hard to find ever since I started recommending, um, recommending this, they keep, they keep selling out. Um, but, um, Anyway, it's the one that brings this little tiny board that's in this one. Um, but this is a voice amp. It's It's got your amplifier, your mic input, all that jazz. That's where you get your board from. Okay, so the next bit is speakers. So with these, the original speaker was not viable for something like this. You're looking for a compact. Here you can see I went with a an exciter, a low profile, a semi-low profile exciter. I got one that would actually fit in there and gives a good pump um, without pushing in my cheeks too much. You know, it depends on... The use case and where you can fit it. Um, in this one, it comes. This one came with a speaker, and I integrated with it originally, but it's not. It wasn't sufficient, so I ended up adding another speaker. Um, you know, I had to make a different toggle because it can't push to two speakers at once. Um, it all worked out in the end. And it was super cool, um, but a lot of extra work, unnecessary. Um, so I think you know, in the future, I'm doing another version of the Vader one, and it's going to go just directly to a second speaker and not mess with this original speaker. Um, so then coming from that speaker wise, then, you you know, again, you fit whatever speaker you can. And this Vader one, I was able to fit a larger speaker in the top dome. It, um, it had a lot, of, a lot of good room in there and I was able to recycle a, a larger speaker into that area. And then it echoes down through the dome and it works really well. Um, and the cool thing is, is that in, in this context, I was able to make it wireless by running the wires from my amp through like a positive through here and a negative through here up through the magnets the metal of the magnets into the top of the helmet and push to that speaker so as soon as you place the the top of the helmet on it's it starts pushing out that speaker um uh yeah so that's the route i'd go for any future uh vader deployment um let's see microphone the one that came with it was great um what's great about these is they've got a flex 
this kind of metal metal flex. Um, and of course, you got to watch your positioning with these um, because you, you point it towards the speaker, it's going to squeal. Um, also, uh, lesson learned: if you put if you put it up against a vibrating surface, for example, in the Mandalorian, um, you'll see here I've got um, I've got a foam pad here. This is my default location to have it. And um, but if if I take this metal and I put it up against the mask, the mask is vibrating because I'm using an exciter. And what it does is that then pushes those vibrations into your mic and your your speaker just screams. Um, so you just uh, want to avoid those vibrations and just get a little bit of cushion there. Or, you know, it even works because most of these mics are multi-directional. So while you don't get as much throughput by talking into the back of it, um, it still it still picks it up and you could put the soft part to the front onto the glass and stop it, which gives it a cushion against the glass and keeps it in place and stop it from squealing that way. So there's different ways to look at it. Let's see what else. Battery. Um, so the batteries that come with these vary. Uh, the one that came with this one was actually a cool low profile lipo battery. Yeah, something like this. These small lipo batteries. Very thin. Um, then the one that came with this, with this better, with this better board was actually a bit bulkier. So it's doable in some contexts. I've, I've worked it into helmets before. This is a pretty low profile helmet. So I ended up swapping in um, a lipo battery and putting it in the ear side. So um, these, these lipo batteries, awesome, awesome. You can get these in bulk. Um, this is eugenics. <laughs> it's almost like eugenics. Uh, yeah, great. Anyway, ergenics. Um, this is 600 milliamps. They do have them at 850 milliamps. They sell them. So that would be the one I'd recommend. I think that's the highest milliamp that they sell. And you can get them in a bulk pack for like 20 something bucks, as opposed to paying 11 bucks for them, you know, if you buy them individually. Um, let's see. Okay. So that's it on that. So those are great because they can be complete these can be completely hidden from sight. Um, and the nice thing is, is like in this context, while I've got a hidden battery right now, if for some reason that battery died, what I could do is pop this board off because I've got it on by sticky tack, pull, pull the wire out of the battery, put this wire in and have a Velcro spot where I could put in my second battery, you know, later in the day or something if I ran out of battery. So that's something to consider too. Let's see where we're at. Um, I think we've, we've gone on just about everything. Um, yeah, so the biggest, your biggest takeaway is find a board that's minimum in size and accessible. So the biggest challenge I had with my original integration, as cool as it was and as great as it turned out, it was this wasn't the most usable board. Um, fortunately, I always keep the volume jacked up to the highest, um, so that, that worked out. But, you know, I had to turn it on before I put the helmet on. It'd be ideal if all that was accessible. So now what I try and do is get things where you can reach in via the, the neck and reach up and get those buttons. Um, and that's why these, these buttons ended up great as in they could change the tracks, but you know, a lot of extra work to put it in. So it's ideal if you can pull off something like this, still get it to look cool, but not have to do weeks of extra work, right? The accessibility too. Um, I, I can't actually get to the TF card in here. I shouldn't need to, because once I put it in there, it's in there, or, you know, the micro SD card, because it's down inside there. I'd have to unscrew things. And this one, I could pop it out and put another one in if I wanted to. In most contexts, you probably don't need to do that. But something to think about, depending on what your use case is. This one had a lot of wires, and I, I managed to stuff a bunch of things in here and had to cut out a lot of the original mass to fit these in there. Um, one thing I'd probably do different if I did something crazy like this again was I'd probably snip some of the wires and just resolder them and re-put new ends on them just so I don't have to, you know, have like a half mile of cable wrapped up in here that's bulking out and pushing against everything. Oh, a voice changer. Um, I've got a deep voice, so I don't particularly worry about the voice changer myself. I can make everything work with these initial boards, but uh, that's something you want to consider. This is one I've got a separate video out there on. It's still got, you know, there's still some bulk to this, but it's not the same as a Zoom multi-stop. You know, these these things, they're great, but you got to wear them on your belt, and they're huge and power-hungry and crazy big cables. This can, this can get a fair amount of decency with some of its effects. Watch my video on this. Um, I think it can help you out. What I haven't done is tried gutting this and seeing if I could fit it in. That may be something I do in the future, um, but this is this is viable, and be it if you put it on your person or manage to get it inside a helmet, um, this isn't as cool looking as if it was probably gutted, but, you know, um, simpler is better. I mean, this is, this is great, and uh, a lot of people use them, but it's, you know, if you want the bulk, go for it. I don't want the bulk. I want it to try and look OEM, 
So this is what I recommend. So of course, as part of the OEM kind of look, one thing is wire management. Um, so to look cool and look original, it, things should be clean. Um, this is mostly good. I'd probably do it slightly different if I did it again. Um, I'd probably paint this uh, to, to blend in a little better. Theoretically, I could have managed to actually embed that, that wire, but you know, I'm, I'm happy with this. I tucked in all my overflow into here, but just wire management, something to think about. And oh, one of the great things about these mics, you now they come with the uh, personal amps, but anyway, these mics come with that. And um, what I do is there's a headpiece. I got it on this one. Yeah, so here's what the mic looks like prior. And then all you gotta do is just kind of pull off this, unscrew and chop this out and jiggle this metal thing out. Or if you're super impatient, you could just use wire snips and try and cut this without cutting the wire, hopefully. Um, and then hopefully you won't cut yourself on that thing later. Anyway, whatever, then you've got this, which, you know, this is a manipulatable item. So great tool. Um, and it, it looks, you know, it gives it an OEM look. I remember the thing I was going to say. So what I did notice with this one, and I don't know what the, I don't remember what the wattage was on this. Um, but when I was outputting to the built-in speaker in here, it gave me low, low volume. Um, and then I realized I'd wasted a lot of time pushing it to the speaker only to get a low volume return. And it was just insufficient. What I did do is just use something like audacity or, you know, whatever your audio editor is, and then jack up the, the decibels. What I did on this one was I jacked up the decibels to almost 18 decibels. And it made a, a huge difference from, from like a faint thing to actually a, an audible version coming through the speaker. And then when it comes out the top, top speaker, it's phenomenal. Use those third-party programs in order to increase the decibels on original um, media files in order to get the volume you need if your board is insufficient. I think that pretty much covers it. Hopefully this helped out. Um, if it did, uh, give a thumbs up. I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do this Vader next. Naturally, it's missing its dome right now. Um, and I'm going to try and do it much more efficient than the, the first version. I really love how the first version worked out, but it was too much work um, and um, not enough value for that for that return. I mean, it looks cool. Whatever. I'm going to get try and get something just a bit more efficient this time. And I'm going to use that Moki, and it should really help out. And uh, we'll see how this goes. That'll be a different video for a different day. Uh, if, if it helped, give a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Take care. I'm out.